Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2022-2023 Bay Area Urban Debate League season. I am Latino. I'm one of the program managers for the Bay Area Urban Debate League. And so I help support some of the schools um, and I try to help them run debate programs at various school sites throughout the Bay Area um, to ensure that kids have access to debate for free through our program, the Bay Area Urban Debate League as well as I help maintain some of the program and logistical needs um, that is particularly for our open division, here to provide some of you all with some additional resources today. I will be going over one of the things that could be pretty useful in debate, and that is topicality. And so today I'll be discussing topicality today and so that you can have some recap of topicality. Now, I know I've talked about topicalities at some of your school sites kind of briefly. Um, some of you have talked about topicality in full um, from last year. There is a video posted of this same presentation, um, but it's specific to last year's topic. Some of the same things still apply. And so in this video, I will show you how it applies to this year's topic. And so, again, um, I will show you some things and, you know, resources and places where you can look at in order to help navigate you through topicality this year. And so to help you to better be able to use topicality or to respond to topicality when you're in these debate rounds. And so um, let's get started. Okay, topicality. So what is topicality? So today we're going to discuss what it is, how do we use it, how do we respond to it. We're going to discuss, um, you know, why is topicality important and all of those things. So when we think about topicality, it's an argument that ensures that we stay within the, the limits and bounds of the topic, really. So this year's topic is revolving around um, emerging technology. This year's topic, right, is a topic that was voted for. And so um, this year's topic is worded as follows. Resolved, the United States federal government should substantially increase its security cooperation with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in one of the more following areas, artificial intelligence, biotechnology, and cybersecurity. And so when we're thinking about emerging technology and technology that is up and coming, new and innovative, that's within those areas of, again, artificial intelligence, biotechnology, cybersecurity, that's kind of where you want to um, kind of be in the scope of discussing. Um, you also want to discuss, you know, the implementation of United States federal policy actions in relation to strengthening security cooperations with, again, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So that's this year's topic. And that's how understanding this topic is kind of pivoting towards. And so, yes, so that's kind of the orientation of where most conversations will start in debate. So what is topic topicality? Topicality is what tests the limits of what should be discussed in the debate. It decides where touchdowns can be made. And so touchdowns, you know, when you're watching football, touchdowns have a certain zone where you can score points. There's a certain zone, there's a certain area on the field in football where you can score points. You have to make it to that end goal. And in the debate, in policy debate, it's the same, it's the same thing. So you have to make it to that end goal. And so how do you stay within the topic? What are the ways in which you stay within the topic? And so, you know, when you're trying to um, score points within debate and you're trying to get those touchdowns, you have a certain area and there's certain, um, there's a certain uh, point um, of discussion and the scope of discussion where you're able to score points. And that's what topicality is talking about. You can't score points in the concession stands. You can't score points in the bathroom of the football field, not in the parking lot. Again, those end zones in that area of the field, that's where football players score points. They stay within the limit of where they are allowed to play. And the same thing happens in debate. 
Topicality exists to limit what the affirmer may talk about so the negative can be reasonable and it's clash an equitable clash within the debate so that the negative has something to say and um, the affirmative is, you know, within the means of what they initially brought into debate. You know, they're staying within the topic that they are providing answers that, you know, can create, again, equitable clash in the debate. The negative argues that the topicality is a voting issue, right? That, you know, if you're, if you are with, with laying out, if you are existing outside of the bounds of the topic, then, you know, there is reasons why we choose the topic. There is reasons why we have um, chosen a topic. There's reasons why staying with the, within the topic is beneficial to debate. And because you don't do these things, here are the reasons why being not in support of the resolution is bad, right? And so there's going to be some voting issues there as to why that's bad and why we should not, not allow people to exist with the, outside of the limits of the topic. So basically, that's what topicality is. You're not talking about what we're supposed to be talking about, and you're discussing something totally that exists outside of the uh, bounds of the topic. So what are parts of topicality? Parts of topicality um, is the definition or sometimes called the interpretation. Then you have the second part of topicality arguments is the violation. You have standards, your reasons to prefer, right? And then you have your voters or your voting issue. Now, remember topicality is an off case position that says that the affirmative does not meet the bounds and scope of the topic that you are existing outside of the grounds in which you are allowed to score points to score to score touchdowns um as a policy debater where are you able to have those offensive arguments so what the first part of a topicality um shell in that negative strategy when you're initially creating a topicality strategy for the one in C, you should have a definition or, or sometimes called an interpretation, right? And so um, that's evidence could be from a dictionary or it could be from that particular source that has context to that industry, right? And so if I am, this year's topic is security cooperation, right? So maybe I want to look at NATO's um, website and see how they define security cooperation or if if you know last year we were discussing water protection rights in high school right and so maybe if we're thinking about water protection maybe I would get definitions on what water protection means within um you know um, organizations like the the EPA or maybe some conserv conservationist group or something like that those are where I would probably be getting my definitions of what water protection looks like but you can you know use um, simple um, dictionaries there's also debate files that have you know definitions made available so that you can create some interpretation of what those limits and scope of conversations mean within debate what does the resolution say you know what do these words mean as it relates to how we're supposed to conduct and discuss certain things within these debate rounds what are the meanings and the definition of these words within the resolution basically that's what the definition or the interpretation this this part of debate is sometimes called the interpretation what is your interpretation what is your definition of what these words mean in debate. And the violation is basically saying that you do not meet these definition. How does your plan neg negatively violate these definitions or don't meet the interpretation of understanding for that definition? So if, you know, if I say security cooperation looks like this and you're not meeting that definition, you know, then you would be violating, you know, the topic under my interpretation of what those meets scopes and bounds of the topic are supposed to look like. 
your standards and your reasons to prefer. So once you've created a definition, once you define how the affirmative team does not meet that definition, then you would describe how you should prefer the negative arguments about why their definitions about debate is better than what the affirmative has provided as definitions for that are being contested by the negative that say what is the appropriate interpretation for this debate round or for the debate rounds that exist this year as it relates to the topic. If the affirmative offers a different definition, why should the judge prefer the negatives definition? So you want to think about, you know, why should the judge prefer your definition than the negatives definitions? Okay. So there's types of reasons to prefer. You have limits, basically saying that you exist within those, exist outside of the limits of the conversation and that that's bad. Um, there's sometimes people, a person will, um, a team will say that there's a bright line and you exist with it outside of that bright line, bright line, meaning that there's some empirical nature of where the topic is and you totally exist outside of what is clearly what the topic is saying this is where those bounds are and you're clearly the the line is bright and it's here and you're not anywhere close right and so that's a bright line ground is basically because you're not topical because you exist within the outside of the line uh, the lines of the topic or the limits of the topic because you exist outside of what's clearly stated the topic to be I don't have any ground for discussion. My ability to have traction is debate is skewed. And so that's kind of what ground is saying. Predictability is basically like, because you're not topical, it's hard for me to create clash in this debate. It's hard for me to predict, you know, what are the suggested um, um, implications of your, of your, of, of your case positions. And so because I don't know your case positions, it's hard for me to create, you know, any true clash within the debate and for me to, you know, have reasonable, predictable arguments. Also that you are not allowing for debate testing to happen and you skew research is another um, type of standard that, you know, we do debate because of research and debate testing. And if you're not within those limits, then, you know, again, there's no clash. You can't do proper research. Another type of standard is abuse, that you skew prep time, that you become a moving target. Um, and there's other specific types of standards like um, OSPEC, ASPEC, um, effects, extra topical, and those things, which we'll get into later. So... What is a voter? So now that you've gotten through your definitions, you've gotten through your violations, you've gotten through your reasons to prefer the last part of your winning C shell for a topicality strategy would be your voting issues. And this is the reasons why the affirmative should lose the debate and why the negative wins. Um, again, you want to describe that the team that provides the best form of debatability and and exists within the means of the topic's jurisdiction, that's the team who's best suited to win the debate, to allow for the most equitable forms of debate conducted um, within these debate rounds for this year as it relates to how the topic is defined. Debatability means that the negative team would not have a fair chance to debate the affirmative um, if they did not operate within the limits of the resolution. These are the type of voters that exist. You have fairness, you know, basically saying you're not fair. The other type of voting issue is, look, we came to learn. You are skewing what debate is intended to do, which is for us to learn and be critical thinkers. And you just don't exist within the jurisdiction of what debate has has intended for. So you should just lose because you're, you're just not playing within the bounds of debate. You're doing something else. Again, no debatability. Here's an example of a shallow form 
of what a topicality show looks like. So um, my definition or the word that I'm going to choose is um, increase. So let's say uh, a plan says to ban something. There's a few um, affirmative cases that say that we should ban or stop an action, right? And so if I hear an app that says you ban something, right, you stop that that program from existing, that there's no, there's, you go from doing maybe 10% of action to omitting that action in its entirety, right? Then that's not really increasing, right? And so if you, so my interpretation of increase, if you, if I'm going against an affirmative that says to ban something, um, increase, and my definition of increase is to um, expand a pre-existing program. So if you ban a program, you make that program obsolete. It's no longer existing, right? And so that means you're doing the opposite of increase. So my violation would be that the app creates um, um, or, you know, some plan that bans something, as an example, and that does not mean that they increase some pre-existing program. So my reasons to prefer are limits and grounds, um, they inju they justify new programs to exist under NATO, skews um, the burden of the negative. Um, the other one is grounds. It avoids the neg generics. You know, it, how can I make generic arguments about NATO and the ability and 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 how and what the uh, and and the ability for me to discuss NATO's implications um, as it relates to how they undergo security cooperation and they have, because, you know, NATO is a political and military um, 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 group. So what about how they act, you know, or don't act? How does that, how does that mean increase, you know, or should that mean increase? You know, those, these are the questions. And so, from the negative side, as it relates to what is fair to debate, it says that we should discuss that and that, you know, there's options. And there's also two arguments that are made that there's certain arguments that are necessary for the negative point of view and not the affirmative point of view, right? And so that, you know, that's why you're allowed to have certain negative arguments and why the app should be within these um, forms of context as it relates to how these words mean. And so, you know, you can say, for this reason, you should vote neg for fairness and education. So when answering topicality, there's a few things that you can do. The first one is you can say that there is, that what you're doing is fair, that the affirmative can reaffirm that the affirmative sets the direction of the debate by being topical. And it's only fair that the negative, which does not have to be topical, explore the grounds um, and can have many counter resolutions, topical cases that they can run. And so, you know, they're going to suggest that the affirmative sets the context for the debate and should be able to make that choice to choose context and debate. And they could, you know, maybe argue that, you know, there's cross-sex checks abuse and all those things, or maybe some other thing. I don't know. But yeah. Um, but the, uh, you can also do uh, reverse voting issues. Um, basically, the affirmative can claim that the topicality argument raised by the negative is abusive of the resolution because the negative is not required to support the resolution. And so the affirmative topicality justifies an affirmative bo ballot. J uh, judges do not find the blank abusive argument very persuasive without giving good clash, meaning that um, you can run a generic T argument but really looking at the affirmative's, you know, um, specific interpretation potentially could be the best interpretation um, and their ability to, you know, figure out the direction of the debate is probably, you know, the better reason to interpret the topic. And so maybe there's some reverse voting issue there. Maybe there's context of industry, you know, maybe there is a date issue. You know, but whatever, you know, maybe there's a new definition that is a, a better definition. Um, maybe there's a historical understanding that, um, so maybe there's a historical uh, definition, but whatever. You need to make 
um, an understanding of why the affirmative definition should be a reverse voting issue. Reasonability is basically saying that the affirmative will argue that they are good enough within within the topic and that there is no warranted reason to reject them outright, that they are meeting some reasonable form of understanding the topic, right? And so um, maybe they don't get, you know, use a specific definition from NATO, but maybe they still use some political or militaristic form of defining what security cooperation is, right? And so maybe that's reasonable enough. When responding to the topic, Kelly, you want to ensure that you provide a counter interpretation and a counter definition. Um, you want to first start off with the counter interpretation just so that you'll be able to make reverse voting issues. But also you want to say that you are topical so that you're able to, you know, say that you there is no reason to prefer because you meet all their reasons to prefer. Um, and then you want to also respond to their standards. Maybe your interpretation of understanding the topic is better. And so um, your reasons to prefer are those um, allows for those reverse voting issues. Maybe you're better for education. Maybe you are better for fairness. And so may, because you provide better standards for evaluating the debate round, you provide better reasons to consider your definitions of typicality. And so um, you want to make sure you're providing counter interpretation, a counter definition, and you can use um, when you are running a typicality, I want to have a good amount of about four standards within my shell um and then when we're, or maybe three i'm gonna say about i like to 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 have about four standards in my topicality shell and and if i have multiple t t shells then maybe i won't have as many standards in each t shell maybe i might have two or three standards in each t shell but um if you're going to have just one topicality shell, you should have, it should be pretty hefty and pretty substantive. Um, unless you don't, unless you have some reason you plan on kicking it later in the debate. Um, but um, again, if you really want to have a strong topicality argument, you should have standards there. And when you think about answering topicality, you want to respond to those standards. So not only do you want to have your interpretation and your definitions, but you want to respond to those standards as well. You also want to respond to those voting issues. Okay. So make sure you're responding to the, the interpretation with the counter interpretation and a remeet. You respond to the violation. You want to say, I don't violate, respond to the reasons to prefer and their voting issues. Okay. Now, We've talked about topicality. We talked about how to answer topicality. The diff there's different types of topicalities when you are running them on the negative. And when you think about topicality that you might have to respond to, you want to think what kind of topicality is this? So we have different types of different types of topicality. We have a spec, meaning that you're not specific to who the agent is who's implementing your plan of action or your or your policy action. Extra topical means that. Um, that you are, um, you run, um, and it sometimes run, it's ran with effects topical as well. It means that the argument, um, uh, it means that the affirmative plan includes planks or components that are not topical. So that means you have extra things within your, your, your plan. Effects topical means that, um, that that there is no direct action to resolution or intent, but only arrives at the alleviating the harms introduced by the firm which teams typically associated with the topic through a variety of internal links. So meaning that you don't create no direct action that leads to to some resolve, that there is steps that take that it takes to get to the resolve of the resolution. And so that means effects that you are effects topical. And then you have TVA, which is topical version of the of the plan, which means that um, that there is some topical version of the plan, and you just chose not to run it. And so, um, if you have any questions about my presentation today, just um, shoot me an email. 
Okay, so this is the um, topic papers. Um, so uh, you should find this PDF. And here there are definitions. And this is the guide that helps people um, understand the topic at the beginning of the year. So this tells you what the intention of the topic is. And so you should always read the topic papers at the beginning of the year. Sometimes the topic papers are not so good, and but you you wouldn't really know that um, until you've had a little bit more more experience. But just to get a, a a gist of what is happening for this year as it relates to what are the bounds of the topic, you should read the topic papers, um, and it tells you just you know where those limits are. Um, you know, it tells you about possible affirmative positions and negative positions. Um, and it tells you about like what to expect and what the scope of the debate is, where the range is, um, how to ensure that you have good quality within your argument. So this paper tells you how to work in tandem with this year's resolution. And so check that out. Also, too. Um, if you're looking for additional definitions, you can always check out um, open case lists. You must now from this season moving forward, you must sign in to open case lists using your tab room account. So if you not if so if you have not created a tab room account, do so now. Take the time to do that. Here you see, you go to Topicality and there's tons of files with Topicality definitions made available to you. Here's an example of what one of those files look like. So um, it tells you, okay, security cooperation. Here's the definition from the Congressional Research Service. This is another definition of security cooperation. Here's different definitions of career co security cooperation that relates to Department of De Defense. Here's security cooperation as it's defined by the Department of Homeland Security. And so maybe the agent who defines um, what security cooperation is may be very um, specific to who may be implementing your plan. And so maybe having that definition is best um used to um have um the correct um effect in, in the way in which you have that the scope of discussion in that debate so yes make sure you check out some of the definitions within open case list and so yes check out the topic papers definitely check out some of those um, definitions within open case list. You can also use the dictionary um, to find definitions. So at this moment, I'm going to advise you to try to choose um, a definition, okay? And try to see if you can make a topicality argument, all right? All right, so try to do your best at this time, work with your coaches to write out a topicality shell. Again, a shell includes a definition, violation, reasons to prefer, and your voters. Topicality should only run within that speech time of your one and see for about no more than two minutes. Topicality is a very easy strategy to run on the negative. Um, and it should be one of the first strategies you should try to run on the negative outside of dis ads. Um, you don't need a lot of evidence to run topicality. Most times you need just a few cards and a dictionary. So, or an e dictionary nowadays. Most people aren't carrying dictionaries anymore, but you can use an online dictionary or an app um, that a diction or an e dictionary that is um, programmed through an app. So using those lay definitions are sometimes just as important as using those um, definitions provided by some of those people coming from those specific industries or those 
um, coming from those ivory tower scholars using very common, very lay definitions, you know, are what's important to defining what those scopes of debate look like, right? And so depending on, you know, what your, your um, affirmative plan is, you'll know what definitions are best to use to respond to a negative strategy. And um, you should definitely consider what definitions are used to create competition with you uh, being on the negative against an affirmative. What do you think are correct scopes of understanding this year's topic? And see if you can challenge some of these affirmatives to meet that scope of understanding. And so take the time to write a T-shell. It should really only take you about 30 minutes to write a topicality shell. Um, and just to get a draft, and then after you create that draft, let's hear them out. Prepare those drafts for the next practice. Now that you've created that draft, let's see how well this shell that you have drafted will convey the message that the team, um, the team that you'll be opposing, right? That team that you're opposing, let's see how well this shell stands up to an affirmative strategy that you plan on using this strategy for. So let's test that out in the next um, practice. How do we do that? Well, let's do a scrimmage debate from the 1AC all the way up into the 2NC. And let's see how well that topicality shell stands up in a scrimmage debate. And you only have to do the constructors. So that means the 1AC up until the 2NC and see how well that topicality argument holds up just as a practice activity for that second day. So that first day, you can construct that 1NC shell. And then the second day, put it to use, all right? So those are my tips on topicality. And I wish you all a good day.